a big hallelujah. And shout a big hallelujah. Zechariah chapter 4 in verse 9. We're going to so from June the 1st, we started 21 days of Thanksgiving. We said what 21 days of Thanksgiving. Glory to God. What are we thanking for? We are a people of faith. You must know who we are. Faith is in our DNA. We are a people of faith. The Bible says, our father called the things that be not as though they were. So in this 21 days of Thanksgiving, we're thanking God for what he has done that we have seen. And we're thanking him for what he has done that we have not seen because we are fully persuaded that faithful is he that's promised he will also do it someone say amen oh glory to god i said glory to god wow praise god hallelujah wow <laughs> thank you jesus Oh wow. Balega ne morote se vlega ne brende le kushte. Ha ha. Let's read this. I have some more scriptures to read. Zechariah 4 verse 9. The Bible says, And the hand of Zerubbabel has what? Has laid the foundation of this house, and his hands shall what finish it. That means there'll be no aborted projects. Nothing is going to go wrong in the center. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the first prayer of thanksgiving. Father, that which you have started, thank you because it will come to perfection. Go ahead. Thank you because it has come to perfection. That which you have started, it has come to. Thank you because that which you have started in us, that gets in it through us. Ibarama Tomro Shabra, Ibro Shamra Kabrate, E Christom Rakab Ratola Mratusha Barabaha, Rabakum Meleshem de Kebahaya. Thank you because that which you have started with harvesters, with harvesters like he, it's done in glory. That which you have started with NLP London, it's done in glory. Like a in Jesus and they will pray oh thank you Lord oh father thank you father thank you Liman to Kabaya Lemendo Kushte Bredini Mahbroske Dehi thank you Jesus uh-huh Sebala Manikoshava Ezekiel chapter 8 verse 1 Ezekiel chapter 8 verse 1 Ezekiel chapter 8 verse 1 Oh wow Ezekiel chapter 8 verse 1 The Bible says that they came to pass in the 6th year in the 6th month in the what? 6th See, in the 6th year in the 6th month 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 in the 5th day of the month as I sat in, the, in my house that the elders of Judah sat before me that the hand of the Lord fell upon me the hand of God is metaphor for the power of God. The hand of God is metaphor for the miracle walking hand of God. Listen, a lot of us here have seen the hand of God. But we want a deeper dimension. It's a prayer. Father, double your hand upon my life. Father, double your hands upon my life. Lift up your voice, pray everybody. Father, double your hands. Let pakushte pradena mantokrate na satali. I've seen your hands before and I'm grateful. Lord, double your hands upon my life. Oh, let's go ahead and pray. Let them bring the karate chef regedi. Let them bring the cabra cut on the rusty frati in the brandy. In brandy kiss cut and negate show chef regedi. Lidi lidi ham tolo no susu susu zunde legedi. Like a tongue skip rakum mana ramana teish kovradiha. Lord, you will double your hands upon my life. You will double your hands upon my life. You will double your hands upon my life. Like a mento cabra que deschede rebacatora. Exi cabra cata ne ruta ne mata. In Jesus' name we pray. And Father, we thank you because you are good and kind. Father, we thank you because prayer point has become testimonies. 
where your people of faith will believe it already will receive already lord will receive for everyone here will receive already in the name of the lord jesus christ will receive miracle babies will receive promotions will receive marriages made from heaven hallelujah we receive in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ approvals, funding, payment, in in increase, expansion. Oh, we receive healings, body healing, miracles, breakthroughs on all the other side. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Please, you can have your seat. Let me say hello to someone on your right and your left and have your seat. Oh, glory to God. You can have your seats. Hallelujah. Choir, you need to find it. We need more space for the choir sit. You know, I can foresee that. <sighs> Praise the Lord. You notice that our gallery is gone. It will be back next Sunday. You know. That's a miracle. You know, it's gone like this Sunday, back next Sunday. You know, just really working hard. You know, to make sure that everything comes back together. Praise the Lord. Just for information, the toilets used to be on my left, but the toilets are now on my right. So a lot of us keep going to the left. The toilets are now on the right. So I wanted to just take note of that. A um, couple of announcements that we have to make. Our 21 days of Thanksgiving continues. What we're doing is that, you know, um, what we're doing is that 1 p.m. in addition to next level, we are actually, in addition to next level, we are actually taking 1 p.m. 10 minutes, making a confession of faith. And thanking God. I just really believe that, that the power of praise is needed just when you are just at the edge of that breakthrough. And that's exactly what we're doing right now. Glory to God. I say glory to God. Hallelujah. So we're going to do that. Um, NLP Canada. Um, NLP Canada. I know they'll put the date on the screen. I think it's sometime in August. Um, NLP Canada is coming. Um, we're planting churches, gathering in Houston, in Baltimore. Um, in Birmingham, in Manchester, in not London, and um, just want to be part of that, you know. And all of you that have friends in the UK, we're asking you that, will you please fill this form and give us three persons that are your friends that we can invite for NLP conference in the UK. So if you want to do that, just raise up your hands and give us, take this card, and there are three of your friends in the UK that you can also invite, you know. NLP conference in the UK is less than 30 days already, so we uh, well we know yeah so all of you all of you that have friends in the uk you want to invite give us your names we'll send you emails you can send to them give you materials you can send to them a lot of us have done that but you know a lot more of us can do that so raise up your hand right now and let's be able to give you the card you know to, to invite your friends in the uk amen praise the lord hallelujah so go ahead and do that amen praise the lord hallelujah amen Quiet. If you guys can all sit on, is it possible to get all of you to sit on one section? Or it's not possible. If it's possible, I'll just love you guys in one session. Yeah, I know you guys love the space, but we don't have it right now. Yeah. And if I can get some of the protocol guys to sit behind, those that need to be there would be there, you know. Yeah. I'm only trying to sort it out because during the preaching, I don't want them to be looking for and people standing and all of that you know yeah the last thing is a business acceleration course um you know a lot of you have registered but we're doing something very specific today something very specific today we're doing something very specific today for the business acceleration course if you so the course is designed for four things a lot of you are praying about your finances about your business and all of those kind of things which is really wonderful but this is the what we're doing. If you are looking for funding, that means you're hoping that maybe someone can invest five million to your business, 2.5, 10 million. This course is for you. Number two, you're trying to get skills on how to grow your business. This course is for you. Number three, you want someone that is good in business to mentor you. This course is for you. And number four, you know, you just want to have a network of entrepreneurs around you. This course is actually. This course is actually for you. This course is actually for you. So this is very important. And you can register today. And if you choose to register today, the cost will be 200000 naira normally. But for today, you get a 50% discount. And you can do it for 100000 naira if you do it just today. The stand is outside there. And you can go ahead and do it quickly. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. So just wanted to mention that. Just wanted to mention that.
All right, let's get into the Word of God today. I'm excited about the teaching today because um, it's a long time I've taught in this line and uh, it's going to just be a great time of teaching. So this morning and this month, this month of June, we're starting a... Please, if you have a testimony, can you just raise up your hands? We have this testimony cards we give out. You can write your testimonies. It helps us a lot to be able to see what the Lord is doing. So if you have a testimony, just wave your hands. Let me see. I have a testimony. Will you just wave your hands? Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you over there. I have a testimony. Awesome. 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 The ushers will give you a card. You know, uh, Mrs. John, help me make sure they're giving them the card. You know, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All right. So today we're starting a new series of teaching on the believer's authority. We're starting a new, it's a new series of, the title of the teaching is Satan Get Lost. And I love it. I love that the title of the teaching is called Satan Get Lost. It's on the believer's authority. Um, let's start with reading from Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1. One of the most amazing things when I began to interact with more Christian is how Christians are actually afraid of evil spirits. It was not something that was very custom to where I grew up in Christianity. But when I began to interact with Christian, I just began to find out, wow, a lot of Christians are actually afraid of evil spirits. It was very fascinating to me. So Ephesians chapter 1 in verse 15, as I said that to you, I remember the story in my mind. Ephesians chapter 15 in verse 22. So this is what will happen in this teaching. In this teaching, we're going to realize the authority that we have in Christ. We're going to realize how to use the authority in Christ. So you have a lot of Christians that will say things like, and this is real. I'm not say, looking, I wish I could look down on what they say, but this is real. They will tell you that, number one, I think I have a spirit husband. I met a lady that told me that she has a mark on her head and that's why she's not married. It's a spiritual mark and that's why she's not married and she's born again. You know, and you know, you have Christians that are going from one mountain to another mountain, one church to another church, looking for prayers, looking for deliverance, looking for something. So you have all those things happening. And it's quite challenging. You have people that tell you that, you know, I can't sleep because I'm oppressed in my sleep. I can't do this. And, and you have great stories like that. You know, you have, great you have people that have different kind of oppression. So the question is this. How, as a believer, do you really deal with these issues from the Word of God? How, as a believer, do you deal with these issues from the Word of God? So we're going to talk about the believer's authority. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 15. Wherefore also, when I heard of your love in the Lord Jesus Christ, and when I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, and love unto all saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in prayer, or also prayer. And this prayer is very powerful. I will be teaching our leaders on the Pauline prayers, and this is one of them. He says that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. He says in verse 18, that the eyes of your understanding may be enlightened, that you may know. It says, it says something is going to change in your perspective. Let me say something to you quickly here. One of the ways you can gauge someone that is spiritual is a change in perspective. Because a change in perspective will ultimately result to a change in behavior. So for example, when you see people that are not spiritual, they feel that God is slow. When you see that spiritual, they go through the same thing and they know that God is at work and it's a process of God that is working. Sometimes, some of, time, some of you are here and you're saying that it seems like God is slow because you're comparing yourself with your friends and comparing yourself with this and comparing yourself with that. And God is not slow. It's just a process. Sometimes God has to prepare you for what he has prepared for you. All you have to learn sometimes is patience. You know, I, I, there was someone that was, you know, there was someone that had a relationship and wanted it at a certain pace and eventually broke up because the pace wasn't there. And the other person moved on to this other relationship and got married. And the person that felt the pace wasn't there eventually is single till even today. And sometimes you're not just, you're not just able to do that. And what you need to ask yourself is that, what is God teaching me through this process? Look at him and say, God is not slow. The way Peter says it is this. He said, God is not slack concerning his promise. It means that God is not slow. 
it means that God is not slow. And sometimes God is trying to teach you very vital lessons. For example, many of you, the reasons why, the reasons why you keep having heartbreaks, and when I say heartbreaks, I'm not saying romantic relationships, that your friends actually betray you, is that you have not learned what God is teaching about friendship. You still don't know how to choose good friends. And choosing good friends is a skill. I'm telling you, choosing good friends is a skill. Sometimes the people that are most fun loving are the most destructive friends. And, some, and, and, and you think that you're going through a tough time and God is helping you to choose good friends. In fact, I want to ask you a question. And, and some of you, you choose friends too easily and bring them into your life too easily. Like you meet someone today and by tomorrow you want them all the secret of your life and you don't even have, you've not been able to build process. Then next week they show you a part of them that you do not know and expect. Then you're like, oh my God. When you have friends, put them in three compartments. The three compartments of the temple. The outer court, that's where everybody is. Then the holy place. Then the holiest of the holy. You will be lucky if in your holiest of the holy you have five friends. Because most people cannot enter there. But guess what? Everybody belongs to the outer court first. In interaction, as they do better, they come into what the holy place you can see that they are there for you. They can keep secrets. They, you share the same values. You share the same vision. You can see that you put each, each level of freshship graduation is a function of a test. A lot of people have friends not because of who they are, because of what they have. And those are destructive. <laughs> you need to be honest with yourself. If I'm not who I am, the fame, the name, the, everything I have, will I still have these friends? Because the real friends are the friends you will have when those things are not there. You know what real friends are? Real friends are friends that when there's nothing and you're broken, they sit down with you and they cry with you and they say, we're in this together. Bad friends are friends that when you come out of it, you know what they say? They say, where have you been? I have been looking for you as though you don't have my number. One of the greatest blessings God can give is a good friend. But you need to be a good person to have a good friend. Shy. Shy. That's the truth. So you need to ask yourself, am I a good person? You need to be a good... The reason why is that God will be kind to give you a good friend. But if you're not a good person, you will, you will misbehave and lose the good friend. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I say glory to God. I say glory to God. I, I need to tweet that. That's something you should tweet on Twitter. Yeah, tweet on Twitter. The hashtag is PB Speaks. Glory to God. The hashtag is PB Speaks. And something powerful about friendship is this. Who you follow determines what follows you. Who you follow determines what follows you. <laughs> Who you follow determines what follows you. Wow. No wonder you're broke. All your friends are broke. Ooh. Ooh. I was below the belt. Praise God. <laughs> I know what that you take cocaine. All your friends do cocaine. Oh, ooh. <laughs> Praise God. Because who you follow determines what follows you. It's, you know the thing? Friends create standards. I'll give an example. Some friends you call on Saturday. I'm like, ah, what? I don't have time. You know, where, where, you know where I'm all going to church tomorrow morning? Because that's a standard in our friend, friendship. We all go to church. Some friends you call. I'm sleeping and I'm going to church. Uh-uh. You go to church. You try, oh. I've not been to church in one year. So, it's not telling not to go, but the standard is so low that if you don't do it, you don't even feel the pressure. You need friends that be like, ah, man, you're praying. I just finished two days fasting and prayer. I just spent four hours in prayer. Like, eh.
that when they say standard, you're like, wow, is this your standard of spirituality of God? Friends, that their hands are open. Open hand. Open hand. If you're my friend, let something touch your hand from me. Every time, hug, hug, hug. Bet they hug, peck, hug, peck, hug, peck. There's something God gives to. Hope you know. And let me say this to you. In every relationship you are in, choose to be the more generous person. You will always have great friends. In every relationship, you... some say people will abuse you. The problem with abuse is this. The reason why you think people abuse your kindness is that you give with expectation. When you don't give with expectation, they cannot disappoint you. Because you do it as unto the Lord. Remember the one that is kind to you, but the one that is, you are kind to don't remember. Rem Let me say it another way. Remember the kindness done to you, but the kindness you do to others don't remember. Because once you remember, you expect returns, and man would, would, what, would disappoint you. Don't remember, so the way they do, you're like, wow, you're in utter shock. Like, what? You did that for me? I'm blown away. Glory to God. Let's keep reading. Back to Believer's Authority. Yeah. So, so, so many of you, you must learn to do friends. Just simple things. Simple things like, your friend doesn't have a car. Pick her to church. Pick him to church. All right, Ephesians chapter 1. So the Bible says this, so back to, back to verse 17. It says, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, that the eyes of your understanding may be enlightened, that you may know, what will you know? You will know what the hope of his calling is and what the riches of his glory of his inheritance in the saints. The Bible says there is inheritance in the saints. Take note of the word. There is what? Inheritance in the saints. The Bible says this, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to what us will believe? No, see, it says, what is the exceeding greatness of his power to what us will believe according to the working of his mighty power? What the apostle was trying to say here in just in the short English is this. He says, there is mighty power at work within us. That's what Paul was trying to say. He said, he was trying to describe the power. He said, his exceeding greatness of his power, according to what his mighty power that is at work within us. Every Christian is a mobile power center. Someone is listening to me here. Every Christian is a mobile power center. Listen to me. We may look ordinary, but we are not. You know, when, we, when, you, know, when, when you see Antonia come with her high heels shoes and, you know, flying down like this and going as if she can't step on the floor, just let us start speaking in tongues huh? and the Holy Ghost will come down. Th th that's what we are. When we look ordinary. When you look at us, you know, we wear shorts, we wear t-shirts. We, we look as if there's nothing. But the Bible says there's treasure in earthen vessel that the excellence of the power may be unto God. I'm a mobile powerhouse. Someone tells you, I will deal with you. Say, you will deal with me. For your sake, I beg you. For your sake, I beg you. Because if I, if I, if I sit down, power sits down. If I stand up, power stands up. If I talk, power talk. The Bible says there's no enchantment against Jacob. Neither is there any divination against Israel. He said, associate yourself together. You shall be broken in pieces. He said, no weapon fashioned against me shall prosper. Every tongue that rises against me is condemned already. You know what it says? It says this is the heritage of the servant. It's not even what we pray for. This is the heritage of the servant of the Lord. Bible says, as they move from nation to nation and from city to city, he suffered no man to do them wrong, saying, touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm. Praise God. Someone say, I'm anointed to the thief. Just in case you don't know. I'm anointed to the thief. Ephesians 
Ephesians chapter 3, verse 19 and 20. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 19 and 20. Paul was praying another prayer for the Ephesians church. And all Paul's prayer was for God to give them knowledge. Why is it important to have knowledge? You cannot exercise authority without knowledge. You cannot exercise authority without knowledge. Why do you have a Christian that wakes up with mark all over the body and say, a demon spirit gave me this in a dream? That's an anomaly. Why do you have a Christian that says there's a curse that runs in our family? That's an anomaly. So when Paul was dealing with believers, one of the things Paul spent time to do was because he wanted them to walk in the fullness of the authority. He was praying that their eyes will be open to know what they have. See what the Bible says. The Christian that can cast out demons and the one that cannot cast out demons have the same power and authority. The difference is that one knows it and knows how to use it and the other one doesn't know it. That's what the Bible says. My people are destroyed, not for lack of power. He said, my people are destroyed, not for lack of prayer. They are destroyed for lack of knowledge. You see, power is not your problem. Knowledge is your problem. That's why when you see a Christian that doesn't value truth, when you see a Christian that doesn't value truth, it's a Christian that will not walk in the fullness of the authority that they deal with. There are some things you are dealing with in the marketplace that take spiritual power to displace her. I'm telling you, before they came to the meeting, they talked, they put something on their tongue, they hit something on their head. It doesn't matter what they hit. Once you sit in the meeting, once you come in the name of the Lord, everything is displaced because the Bible says light shines in darkness and darkness, oh yeah, darkness does not compete. Darkness does not wrestle. He said darkness cannot comprehend. As soon as light shows up, darkness what fades up. As soon as light shows up, darkness fades up. All you have to do is to show up in the name of Jesus. And the darkness will what? Fade off. Oh, somebody say, I'm a mobile house. Say, I'm a mobile powerhouse. Touch me and touch power. Praise God. I'm not a Christian CC. I'm not, I'm not all this 21st century Christian that can't cast out demons. He said, these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out demons. We are not the one that should be looking for prayers. We should be one praying for others. That's the way the Bible says it. Any small thing. Pastor, Pastor, I need prayer. Any small thing. Pastor, Pastor, I need prayer. What will you... Is it Satan is chasing me? Satan is chasing you. Do you know who you are? Is it there's something in that family? All the women don't marry in your family. What kind of family is that? When you died, you died with Christ. You are now in a new family. The Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. All things are, yeah, 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 yeah. The curse is passed away. The delay is passed away. The shame is passed away. The altar is passed away. He says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. All things are passed away. He said, be all, all things have become new. All things have become new. If you believe, shout amen, somebody. All things have become new. All things have become new. They said there's an altar in our family. Who's altar? I'm the only altar I'm connected to is in heaven. The only altar I'm connected to is in heaven. Tap your chest and say, I know who I am. You must be not be careful of just demons, even pastors. Because I remember the pastor that told me when I was young. That would die young. And I looked. Who say it? What did Lord say it not? Yeah. Ephesians the three. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. One of the most personal decisions you must make for yourself is a devotion to Bible study. Because without Bible study, you will not know what is written. Without knowing what is written, you will not be able 
to exercise your authority. This one Sunday in a week, or one Sunday in two weeks or in a month, it doesn't work. And even if you know, there's something about hearing again that makes a strong guy within you. See what the Bible says. Ephesians 3 verse 19. Paul was praying for them again. What was the prayer? That they would know. It was another prayer. The prayer was focused on them knowing. You cannot be praying that God will help you know without studying. It says that you may know the love of God which passes knowledge. Ha, ha, ha. The result of the knowledge is that, that you may be filled. Please give me a glass of water. Is it, is it glass there? Is that water for? Bring it. He said that you may be filled. Wait, what? Is there another bottle of water there? Yeah. Is this bottle for? Oh, no, I want to give you a microphone. Look carefully before you answer. Is this bottle for? It's full. It's full. Okay, let's see. But there's this space on the top. Is this full? No, sir. It's almost full. Okay, can you fill up this glass? Open that and fill up this, this bottle. Fill up the bottle. Okay. Is it full now? Yes, sir. It's full. If this bottle is full, anything, can I put any other thing inside? Why? Because it's full. When the Bible says you are filled with the fullness of God, how can you not say evil spirit is inside? Where will he sit? When I'm filled with the fullness of God, how can you not say something, mommy, what that spirit is inside? When I'm filled with the fullness of God, if he tries to enter, it will only overflow out because I'm filled with the fullness of God. Somebody say, I'm filled with the fullness of God. I'm filled. I'm unavailable. That's it. Totally occupied. Someone asks me, someone says, Pastor, they say I'm possessed. I say, you are. He said, Pastor, you, you agree? I say, you're possessed with the Holy Ghost. I say, yeah, yeah, yeah. I say, so if you're possessed, what can possess you again? The challenge is this. You do not know you are filled with the fullness of God. So when they say they want to place a curse on you, where can they place the curse? There's no space for a curse. Because I have been filled with the fullness of God. When they say they want to put evil on me, there's no space. It's not even me praying. I don't have to pray. I have been filled with the fullness of God. Paul's prayer is that they may know. If, if you just know who you are. You know, a lot of you became most of your Christian life in the last few years. This truth... I've walked in it for over 20 years. When I was young, thank you. When I was younger, I'm still young, I'm still very young. Many of you that had uh, mothers that used to trade, big time trade, they used to have the money box. Did you have that experience? How many of you had a money mother that was a big trader and had a money box? You can hold on to it, that's fine. How many of you had? You will notice. They would sell and put the money in the money box. So I would go and help my mom once in a while. Then I would see this white thing with tread. Who, did the mom have that white thing in the tread? Like something like this? They used to put it in the money box. It came in different sizes and shapes for many people. Did, did anybody have that experience? You knew what I'm talking about? Oh, your, your mom had it? Oh, that's great. Oh, your mom had it? Great. So I was concerned. I was like, what is this thing that is in the money box? And... My mom already knew I was born again after the Holy Spirit and she didn't want to answer the question. So my aunt eventually answered and said, some people spend notes, nine hundred notes, that are demonic. So when they put the money with all the money, the money can disappear or the whole business can be affected. He said, so this protective charm is to protect the money. I look at my mom. You don't need a protective child. You have a protective son. The blessing for me covers you. Didn't you read the story of Job? Bible says, 
That has put an edge around Job and over all his children and all that he has. Not just his children and all that he has. Are you hearing me? This is how you understand who you are. Protective charm. Protective charm. You are the protection. Glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. I mean, when you understand this authority, you understand this authority. When I was in school, I went to University of Lagos here. When I was in school, courtism was very hot. Very hot. Very hot courtism. Just in the first few years. And this guy had gotten born again and he was in black axe. And had gotten born again and prayed for him. Then the black axe people told him, they said, you cannot get born again and leave us. I said, he said, we will kill you. The guy that came to tell me, he's maybe as big as Truma, huge. When he told me that, I was so confident of my authority in Christ. I said, get up! He said, I said, let's go. Take me to the Capone's house. The Capone is the, is the chairman. I just, all I took was my Bible. You would think, you, I, I took my Bible, get into the car. Let's go. I took my Bible. <laughs> You know, when we were approaching his room, I could see him move from the front to the back. I said, this room? I said, go for your hand. When I got to the room, I banged on the door. I did not go. I banged to show I brought a fight. Bah, bah, bah. So I said, tell the Capone I've come. I've come for his release. If his life matters to him, he should not touch him. If it does not matter, then he should touch him. Life for life. So I say, ah, you are so bold though. It's knowing who you are. What do I know? Luke chapter 10 verse 19. What do I know? Luke chapter 10 verse 19. They threatened the office. Any small thing. <laughs> one lady. One lady had not been able to have a child. So they brought her for prayers. So when they brought her for prayers, she, she'd been going from church to church, places, no solution. When they brought her, we prayed. She was not even pregnant yet. The next week, a younger sister came out and said, hmm, you, you're going around for prayer everywhere. Let me just tell you, the kids, your pregnancy is with me. The kids, your pregnancy is with me. If you, if you like, they should take it to heaven and come down. You will never have a child. Except I'm the one that opened it for you. So she came back and said, she now came back and said, Pastor, hear what my younger sister said. I said, why is she talking now? Because we prayed last week. Because the care has been removed. <laughs> I said, the person that will kill you will not talk. They will kill you. If they are making noise, they don't have the power to kill you. I said, no, this one, I will show you. They don't have, people that will show you will just keep quiet. Because they don't want the showing to be traced to them. I said, the reason why she has not talked all these years, because there was no place you went to that was a threat. But now that you have been delivered, she's harassing you to enter into fear so she can attack you again. Yes. Guess what happened? That the next month she got pregnant, she has her baby now. The authority of the believer. What is our authority? So, you know what I'm saying this to you? Is this thing for just pastors? Oh, just for Pastor George, Pastor Femi George. You know, Pastor Femi George is tall. He has authority. Oh, no, 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 no. It's for Pastor Bolaji John. She has authority. No. Read what the Bible says. Are you ready? Talk to me. Are you ready? Yeah. Uh, at the back, are you ready? Yeah. Let's read. One to go. He said, Behold, I give unto, I give unto pastors, right? I, I give unto apostles, right? He says, I give unto who? Are, are you amongst you? He says, I give unto you what? Power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Take note. He says, I give you power over some power of the enemy. He said, if it's cancer, we got the power to kill it. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. He says, delay, we got the power to crush it. He said, I give you power over all the powers of the enemy. And once you begin to trample, he said, nothing. You know why he said nothing? There's a way you can begin to bind the devil you become afraid that maybe it will come back to me he said i give you an insurance that nothing will be able to touch you someone say hallelujah someone say hallelujah someone say hallelujah 
Somebody say hallelujah. One, one, one politician reached out to me. He said, I'm concerned about, I think it was a governor, a minister. He said, there's someone that comes to see him. That once he talks, he puts something in his mouth and talk. He said, whatever we agree, we'll just change his mind. He said, I'm always concerned because he has changed his mind again. He said, I don't know what to do. I said, he'll touch his mouth, talk his own, talk. I said, touch your own, talk, talk your own. Because whatever power he has, you can neutralize it. You know, one of my, one of my, one, one, of, the, one of the lovely brothers in the Lord, Brother, um, brother Talks, we call him Brother Talks. He heads Rema Ministries here in Nigeria. He said, when he was in school, this guy used to do magic. He would take blade, knives, cut himself, and he would never bleed. He would tell people that they should even give him their own, they should go and buy blade and knife. He would just cut him, he would never bleed. So one time he was passing by and someone said, Pastor Talks, look at this thing. Can you explain it? And they went there. He said, he said this is all the work of evil spirits that just, the evil spirit can affect metal. The same way the power of God can make metal rise from water. Evil spirit can affect metal and dull it in a moment. So when he went there, he cut, cut, he didn't bleed. But Talks said, that's fine. The last one you used, I did not cut you. Let me have it. He took it. He said, you blade, the power of God has come on you right now. The demonic spirit that's behind this manipulation, I break it. Blade was designed to cut. I authorize you to do what you are meant to do. The guy thought it was the same blade. It was. I see <laughs> blood there coming out. The reason, see, the re listen, until someone that has power shows up, people that are powerless will not know. Everything. <laughs> The major problem with all of this Gen Z Christian is that I gave myself away. I gave myself away so you can use me. Here I am. <laughs> Christianity is more than doing hand like this. So. <laughs> the power of our Christian life is in the private. <laughs> From the place of prayer, we release the power to change things. You must know, see, you must know there are some things there eh, that we cannot compromise. We cannot compromise. See what it says. It says, I give you power over all the power of the enemy. So I want to ask you, your spiritual husband, has he given you power by it? But yet, every night he'll be visiting you, compulsive visitor. You not even gave it a name. I have a spiritual husband. I don't know when you got married. Did your father give you a spiritual husband? You know, say one prophet said, Do you read the Bible at all? Even in the physical, when people don't want to divorce, you'll divorce the husband. What about in the spiritual? You can't divorce him. When he comes tonight, you will tell him I know what to do. You will say in the name of Jesus Christ, Oga, Jumbo. <laughs> Maybe I don't know how it comes. I don't know how it comes. Maybe you come and maybe you want to say, hey, 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 hey. you know, maybe it comes. He said, Oga, Ja! Ja! Ja, Ja! In the name of Jesus. Don't even use too much English to deal with the demon before he thinks it's important. Why? Because I give you power over all the powers of the enemy and nothing shall not be enemies able to hurt you. So I said, Pastor, I cannot explain, but things are just tight. I know it's something spiritual. We don't need to come for prayer. That is okay. Something spiritual. You gather. I scatter all of you. That's it. Stop talking about the devil as if it's important. Devil. No, no. As we are talking about it, if it's important, wouldn't have shut down the system now? Wouldn't he have shut down the church? He's an idiot. He's powerless. Okay, show up now. When I say Satan, show up, somebody pass away. Careful, though. <laughs> okay, Satan, show up now. Because there's power in the name of Jesus. If he shows up, we waste him. What is song? Kabali, it will see much more. 
Bible says, having spoil my having sports, principalities, and powers, he made an open show of them, triumphing over them. In, oh, glory to God. Someone say, I will sit on your paper. Listen, this month, I don't miss church. Eh? I will tell you, I will get them. They, will, they want to sit. They will get up. They themselves, they will what? They will get up. That's what it means to have authority in the name of Jesus. Let's go back. Ephesians 3 verse 19 and 20. It says we're filled with the fullness of God. All of you that they say you have five brothers. I hope you can hear the scripture. I'm filled with the fullness of God. Where is the five brother? I'm filled with the fullness of God. No sickness can stay in my body. I'm filled with the fullness of God. I'm filled. With this kind of scriptures, you don't even need prayer. Not at all. No need for any kind of prayer. Just speak the word. And the power of God will be released. Look at verse 20. Verse 20 says, That's what I'm going to. Are you ready? Are you ready? If you're ready, say amen. amen. Okay, let's stand up and read this together. Stand up, everybody. Stand up, everybody. Stand up, everybody. Are you ready to read? Let's just want to go. Now, unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to what the power where is it he said the power is not in heaven he said the power works in me i'm a mobile powerhouse oh, yeah, 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 yeah. i'm a mobile powerhouse he said this power is at work in me if i walk into a meeting power has entered if i walk into an hospital power has entered if I enter a mortuary, power has entered. The power is as working me. The power is as working me. The power is as working me. If you believe, really shout amen. The power is as working me. It's all over me. It's in my head. It's in my lungs. It's in my tail. It's in my body. The power is all over me. All over me. I'm shocked in it. I'm immersed in this power. This power of the Holy Ghost. Please have your seats. When I was 14, I attended the Federal Government College. I know they locate them in the villages. So once in a year, we have... What do they call it? Is it cross-country? Is it cross-country that you go out and... You go out of the school to run. Is it cross-country? So we never used to do cross country. We used to do spiritual country, spiritual crossing. So every time people went to run, we we'll used the opportunity to go and preach to those in the village. So as we're going that day, I asked my colleague, because we were, we were in groups, we divided ourselves. I said, what can we convert that the whole town will know? Remember that I was just 14 years old, that I've converted someone. The guy wisely and stupidly combined suggested the chief high priest of the village and i said that's okay and we went i went and he was making fire in the sitting room all of those kind of things and i sat down there i said i come to you in the name of the lord jesus christ i sat down there i preached and preached i saw the idols i saw the shrine i saw the i was not afraid i knew that greater is he that is in me than he that's in the world you don't understand you enter a habitless house Right there in Otogolu, in the village. Your parents don't know you are there. This is a 14 year old child. Just because you know who you are. Yet, as a married man, the day your heart self confesses the witch, you knelt down in front of her and say, My mommy, my mommy, my mommy, I beg you, whatever you want, I will give you. Just leave me and my children. And the, the girl that is 16 years old, you, you are 48 old. He said, I will show you. I will show you and your wife. She said, you will punish me all this. I will show you. Your wife also knelt down. Ah, we didn't know you are our mother. You didn't know you are. They found mother. Speaking in tongues. Oh, speaking in tongues. Oh. You didn't know you are our mother. Speaking in tongues. Bring her. She needs to see the power of God. By the time she tried to operate, we will hang her in the spirits. I 
Why? According to the power at work in us. The major challenge is this. Most of you, when you think of church, you think of, you think of some kind of celebration which is true, but you don't think of the depth of relationship with Christ and how it affects you. So Luke chapter 10 verse 19 says, He gave us power. The word power there is actually authority. The Greek word is exousia. You want to write it down? E-X-O-U-S-I-A. It's exousia. Exousia is delegated what? Authority. That's the first thing he gave us. He gave us what? Authority. Let me show what authority looks like. Um, where's, my, where's my man? My man, are you there? Yeah, come. No, not you. Not you. The guy behind you. Thank you. My man, come. Every time I look at you, you look more familiar. Tishanta. Uh-huh. Look at this guy. When he tells you to stop, do you stop because he's strong, he's rich, or because of the uniform? Oh, wow. So some of you are even richer than him, stronger. Where's Ch Chima? Come. <clears throat> Chima, can you take this guy? Tell me. Just be honest. What's your microphone? You left it. Like, if I said you should take him out, can you take him out sincerely? Just evaluate. Yes, sir. Huh? Yes, sir. One time. One time you can take him out. Yes, sir. But, but if this guy tells you to stop, why will you stop? The uniform. He has the authority. You can put up your microphone because of the sound. Look at this. The major problem with you Christians is this. You keep thinking, who am I to command Satan? It's not about you. It's about the uniform you wear. So, when you say, in the name of Jesus Christ, what are they going to I'm coming in the uniform of Jesus. Whatever answers to Jesus must answer to me. That's it. You know, if you see this guy just with this badge, just this badge, and the judge just says, stop. You will stop, not because of him, because of what? Of the badge. Because of what? Of the badge. The question is that you have a badge in the spirits. You have authority. You have what? Authority. So Luke chapter 10 verse 19 lets me know I have authority. What's authority? Delegated what? Power. But guess what? I don't only have authority. Someone say amen. amen. I don't only have authority. I also have power. Yes. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. So authority is based on I was given a right to do something. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Thank you. So we can have your seat. Bring me my power. See what it says. It says, but you shall receive what? After what? Come. Chantel. Hands up. <laughs> you saw power. My brother. Hands up. Where's that guy in the... Where's, come, 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 my brother. Just point the gun at anybody. Ask them to ask them. Let's see what will happen. If they would think of your size or not. Anybody that you think is very powerful, just ask them. Anybody that you think is... Uh -huh. uh. <laughs> he pointed at the camera. <laughs> pick someone over here. Just pick someone. No, just look at them over here. Just pick anybody that you think will not obey you and point the gun at them. Yeah, you... <laughs> stand up. He says, stand up. The reason why is that power is power. So God says, I'm not just giving you authority. I'm giving you what? Power. Power is the ability to do. And he says, so, so when they say someone has cancer and we go in the power of the Holy Spirit, we have the power to remove the cancer. His ability to what? Do. Many of you, if someone point this gun at you, at traffic, the way you'll be humble, the way you be humble, you would, even as I'm holding my right hand, say, Pastor, be careful, don't let it turn towards me, don't let it turn towards me. Well, it's a plastic gun just for you to know. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah.
As a Christian, we have authority, the right. Then we have authority, power, we have authority, exousia, the right, delegated power. But we also have the power itself, the ability to do. Stop talking to God about your problems. Talk to your problems about your God. Stop talking to God about your problem. Talk to your problems about God. Stop talking to God about your Talk to your problems about God. God, it is how you keep looking at me. You want to embarrass me. I'm not married at 38. Eh? I've cried and cried and cried. You're not doing anything. Shut up! You say, that spirit of marriage had today. I take authority over you. I break your influence over my marriage. Every time someone wants to help you, they'll just change their mind. They will say, that influence that comes on Mr. So so so's mind that changes their mind to help me. I command that influence to be broken. I command their heart to open towards me. That's how you take authority. And you know the way you think the Bible says, anywhere the word of the king is, there's what? So, how do you release authority? By speaking. By speaking. Let me show you one scripture and we'll pray. Stand on your feet, please. Exodus 37, verse 7. Oh, glory to God. How do you exercise authority? By what? Speaking. What should you say? The biggest deal in my industry come to me. Oh, glory to God. You are exercise authority. The biggest deal in the power sector come to me. The biggest deal in real estate come to me. The biggest deal in consulting come to me. The forces of life is pulling them onto me. The force of life is pulling them onto me. In the name of Jesus Christ, funding has come to me. Hallelujah. Opportunity has come to me. Approval has come to me. Hallelujah. Because life and death are in the power of the tongue. And they that love it will use it well. Somebody shout, I receive it. Don't forget who you are. This is a talking kingdom. Exodus 37 verse 7. See what it says. See what it says. Can, can you read? You would touch your stomach. I carry my baby. I carry my baby. I carry my own oh You call your baby. I carry my baby. Were you, did you hear the testimony? Hold on. Hold on everyone. Please pay attention now. Did you hear the testimony from Next Level on Friday thereabouts? The lady with the Zoom. She in the UK had a strange sickness and she her stomach began to grow as though she was pregnant and she looks like someone that is six months old pregnant uh, if you can show the picture look at that this is a young lady in her 20s she began to look as if she was six months pregnant the major problem was that she didn't have fibroid and the doctors did not know what was in the tummy one day during NLP as I was pre praying I mentioned her name I mentioned what she was wearing I said, in fact, the doctor told you that it's not fine, but they don't know what it is. I said, right now, the power of God is on you, hitting you. In the UK, she said she felt something touch her body. She went to the restroom. Then clots of blood, like a fist, began to come out of her stomach, of, 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 of her. Four clots came out. Instantly, her stomach reduced. L look at her picture. Look at her. Question, question, question. What the doctor could not see. How does a prayer from Africa touch it? Because there's no realm of there's, there's no distance in the realm of the spirit. Once power is released, power is released. Sir. Praise God. Exodus chapter 37, verse 7. Sorry, um, Ezekiel, see what it says. This is I wanted to prophesy. It said, I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise. As you speak today, there will be noise in the right quarters. He said, behold, there was what? A shaking. You are waiting for an appointment as you prophesy. They will be shaking everywhere. Shaking everywhere. The Bible says, and behold, the bones began. Uh, yeah, yeah. What could not connect before, it will begin to connect. The bones began to come together. Lift up your voice and prophesy. Go ahead and declare. Exercise your authority. Exercise your authority. Exercise your authority. Glory to God. Exercise your authority. Exercise your authority. 
I have authority in the name of Jesus. Prophesy, prophesy. Gaima shkato nema kolentes. Libe rekuske vrakega. Shalege brokatosa. Rabanatoske vrediskos. Shebrakte kriktos. Kriktos ke braktaka. Lime ne branto. Rabababanteya. Shke brakto kominantos. Prophesy. Oh, the shaking has begun. The shaking has begun. The noise has begun. The bones are coming together. Glory to God. The bones are coming together. As she came, man and dreski from the brickus kiva, ribushane mamruska. Hallelujah. Amen. You're gonna take one more minute to prophesy, but let me tell you what's gonna happen. As we're praying right now, you know what's gonna happen. Some of you came. Some of you have tumors in your body. Just put your hands there. You will discover it will disappear. How it will go, you will not know. Are you ready? I command every tumor, every growth, every tumor, every growth, every fiber. I command you, come out of their systems now. In the mighty name of, come out of their bodies now. In the mighty name of Jesus, go ahead and prophesy. Go ahead and prophesy. Go ahead and prophesy. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. It's done.